Hi, it's Amy from Amy Designs, and today I'm gonna to walk you through how to sew a chapstick holder. These are fantastic for throwing onto backpacks, onto your keychains, or just having in your purse as a way to keep that chapstick from disappearing into the abyss that becomes your purse. All you need is a little bit of fabric, some fusible fleece if you have it, and a split ring, and you're good to go. I hope you'll join me as we make chapstick holders today on Amy Designs. Today we're gonna to do the chapstick holder. This is part of my summer sewing series. The first week we are doing our fabric lanyard with safety clasp, a mini wallet, and a chapstick holder. These make great gifts for graduates, for friends. They're super fun. Don't take a lot of fabric or a lot of time, which is perfect for those projects that when you just have a couple hours in the summer, the middle of the day you wanna sew. These are great any time of year though to have on hand. Um, great for gifts, stocking stuffers, little handmade add-ons to store-bought gifts. Throw a little money in the wallet and that's your whole gift. It's awesome. So let's get going on our chapstick holders. If you would like to join in the summer sewing series and get printable PDFs of all of these patterns straight to your inbox, head to my blog at the link in the show notes and I will um, get you on my newsletter emailing list and you will get all of these PDFs sent straight to you. All right, let's get started sewing. The thing I love so much about these chapstick holders is it's super easy, not a lot of fabric or time, and they're really easy to have and handy to have on hand. You're going to need two pieces of fabric that are two inches by six inches. Now it really is easiest if these are non-directional fabrics, only because you're folding up it in half to make, you know, the pocket part of your chapstick holder. So you don't have to pay attention to the directions if it's an easy non-directional fabric. It's possible to do it with directional fabric, but I prefer not to, <laughs> that's just me. Um, especially I would recommend if you are doing a directional fabric to have that be the inside or lining of your chapstick holder. That way it's for sure going the right direction. And if you are using it for the outside of it, then make sure that you're paying attention as you go to um, have that end up the right direction for your chapstick holder. You also need a second, a uh, third piece of fabric, I guess. Um, and this is to hold the split ring. And this is two inches by two inches. And then I really like to add a piece of fusible fleece. It gives some body to your chapstick holder, which helps to hold the chapstick into place. And I always have scraps on hand because I make lots of zipper pouches and bags and things like that. So it's perfect for me. If you do not have um, fusible fleece, you could use a piece of quilt batting and then just spray baste it into place. Or you could even use felt. You could even use like inexpensive acrylic felt from the craft store. Um, and again, just uh, fuse it into place with either basting spray or um, some other fusible or adhesive um, that you can use on fabric. So those are some options if you do not have fusible fleece on hand. Once you have all of your pieces cut, oh, and the last thing that you'll need is your split ring. Now these are the one inch split rings and they are the ones that are easiest to find. You can find them at Walmart, any box store, um, usually you'll find them over in the office supply area. You can also find smaller ones. I believe this is a three quarter of an inch one um, and you could even get a half inch one. I really actually prefer these inexpensive one inch ones because they're heavier duty, they're really solid and they're so easy to find. But sometimes you just want a nicer looking, a finer looking one um, or a smaller size or a different metal finish. So you can find these in gold and that stuff too. And these ones you'll most likely find in the jewelry finding section of your, um, you know, craft stores and things like that. And you could probably even find them online. So you just wanna make sure that you have a split ring um, to use to make your chapstick holder. That's all you need. All right, let's get going. The first thing that you're going to do is head to your iron. You're going to take your fusible fleece and you're going to center it onto what will be the lining of your chapstick holder. It doesn't matter in this case because they're both the same fabrics, but if you're using two different fabrics, you wanna make sure that it's the piece that's the lining. Make sure that you follow the manufacturer's instructions to fuse that fleece into place. The next thing you're going to do is take your two inch square of fabric for your um, split ring 
And then the first thing you'll do is press it in half. And again, because it's square, it doesn't matter which side you start. Just press it in half. Get a nice good crease there. You'll open up that press and then you'll bring the two sides in to line up with that pressed crease. You'll want to press both sides well. And then you're going to refold that first crease so that you have your raw edges tucked inside. Then you'll take this to your sewing machine and you'll do an edge stitch down both sides of your strap here. Once that's finished, we are going to get ready to assemble our chapstick holder. So you'll first take your strap that you have here and you're going to fold it in half. And then on what will be the top of your lining fabric, okay, so, Again, this is non-directional, makes it super easy. You're going to center your strap here and you wanna make sure that it's centered. I usually use my cutting mat to help center it. You could use a ruler or whatever. Um, you wanna make sure that it's centered there. And I like to have my strap extend a little bit past the top of my chapstick holder. I do this for a couple of reasons. The first is it makes it a lot easier to hold it into place, especially as you're trying to feed it into your sewing machine but then it also helps you make sure that it's staying perpendicular um, and straight with your chapstick holder. When you come around this corner and you go to sew across here, you're bumping into a really thick bunch of fabric there. And so it wants to kind of push it forward a little bit. So another thing that I recommend is once your needle gets close to it, I will actually lift up my presser foot and then put it back down so that this piece makes sure that it has not gotten shifted and crooked. Okay, so you'll want to pin that in place. Another thing that I like to do with this is use two pins to hold it in place. That way it helps to keep it straight as well. Once that's pinned into place, you're going to take your second piece of fabric and you're going to put it right sides together on top. And I like to pin a few pins around it. And then you're going to take it to your sewing machine and you'll stitch around all of the sides, leaving an opening for turning. Now you're going to fold this up to create a piece that is about three inches tall. You wanna make sure that your opening doesn't get um, caught in that fold. It's just much easier when you go to finish this up at the end. So I like to come down about a quarter of the way and start and then just leave an inch and a half or so for turning. Do make sure that you backstitch at the beginning and ending of your stitching. And the other thing that I like to do is when I go over this strap that I have for my D-ring, I like to backstitch at the beginning and ending of that. It's gonna get a lot of pressure pulled on it, um, especially if you're using it like on a keychain or whatever. It can get a lot of tension on it. So I just like to make sure that that's secure and really gonna stay in place. Once you've sewn all the way around it, you're going to clip all four corners to remove any of the bulk. You do not need to trim off the extra part of your strap unless it bothers you, but I like to just have extra fabric there. I figure it's stronger reinforcement um, so that it's not gonna fray out or anything like that. Then you want to turn your chapstick holder right side out. I like to use a blunt turning tool to make sure all of my corners are pushed out as evenly as I can. And then you're going to want to pay attention. This is my opening here. This is the side with fleece on it. And you're gonna want to do your best to fold under this seam allowance here and make sure that you have a nice straight edge all the way down. Once you have it all pushed out and straightened up how you like it, you press it really well. Then we're going to use a ruler and I'm going to measure three inches from the top. And again, I have the piece with the fleece facing up to me here because I want the fleece on the inside to help hold that chapstick better. And then you're going to fold up the bottom at that three inch mark. So I will do exactly what you see here. I will just line up my ruler right next to it, put that fold right at the three inches, and then I'm going to pin this in place Again, I wanna make sure that the sides are all lined up as evenly as I can. And then I will take this to my sewing machine. And then you're just going to sew around, start at the bottom, back stitch, up across the top and back down and back stitch here. That's all there is to it. And then the last and final step is to just attach your split ring. 
I like to use an awl or something pointy, even a safety pin sometimes to help me separate this to save my fingernails. But you can absolutely just use your fingernails and slide that split ring up on this ring here and your chapstick holder's done. They are so easy and fun. I like to have them on hand. They make great little additions to gifts, tie them onto the bow or whatever. They're awesome for chapstick holder, uh, for keychains, excuse me, back to school, all of that stuff. I hope you've enjoyed this quick and easy tutorial for making a super simple scrappy fabric holder, a uh, fabric chapstick holder, <laughs> excuse me. If you would like to see more tutorials like this, I hope that you will subscribe to my YouTube channel here. You can also follow me on Instagram at Amarooni Designs. All of the links, including the link to the blog post to sign up to receive the PDFs for this pattern are in the show notes. Until I see you next time, happy sewing, my friends.